it's amazing how much you're really just building up to a large degree uh, a muscle or a set of muscles and it's it's been fascinating but yeah to your point you know to really become accomplished singer you've got to you've got to neglect a ton like i'm on my way to work i'm doing vocal exercises often uh, at lunch i'm doing that when i get home i'm doing that when i'm hanging out with my baby i'm often singing to him so there's a lot of other things i could be doing <laughs> yeah in those slots right <laughs> yeah when you get the bug of technique it can totally yeah. take over people do seem to start at a different spot but i think mm-hmm. and a lot of that isn't necessarily to do with singing it's like you know some people when they're young even things like say when you're a kid you mm-hmm. spend a lot you spend a lot of time like just mimicking cartoon characters and stuff like this mm-hmm. like that can set you up with a huge advantage as a singer this is why I like so. someone like Jim Jim Carrey. That's why he he can't, he, he going to singing like it's just nothing because because he spent so much time like ma- mimicking sounds and making just all sorts of things like that that has a massive impact on your ability to get into technique quickly. Um, I think you're right. Whereas yeah. if you're someone who's you know you grow up in an environment where everyone's very quiet, you never even have you know you never raise your voice. You're in, you know, you're talking to them really quiet all the time. Like yeah. that that sets up a, a much harder route. But that being said, the start point is lower or higher, but you can clamp your way back up to a better start spot and then from there mm-hmm. from yeah. there, you know, you're you're on the same path as everyone else. I faced that like I kind of had a tough start spot and pretty much had to dig out the hole for quite a while. But then yeah. eventually I got to the point where I was like, well I'm just doing really what what the other talented singers who I, you know, used to look up to, I'm basically just on the same journey as them now. And then from there, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, you, you, you put in the time. I had a lot of very talented singers who I met years ago who didn't, don't really, never really developed further than where they were at. They're very mm-hmm. good singers, but that mentality of growing and developing, that's really what separates the good singers from the, you know, the more professional singers who really like get full technique together you know like your luther vandross type singers versus yeah. you know uh other people who just you know they're not they don't put in the time each day and it's not like you have to put in massive amounts of time but mm. daily daily work like 40 minutes an hour where you're really focused on just concentrating on work on it like for me that's yeah. always been enough um yeah your voice gets tired anyway yeah. after a certain amount of time and mentally totally. it gets tiring so no, 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 no. It's better. We can work at not yelling mm-hmm. at, this, at this low volume. Because um, the problem with practicing, like the pro- try, if you try, if we're trying to avoid not yelling or pushing as we open up. Mm-hmm. If, if we do it on, if we do it on heavy coordinations, it can start to fatigue the voice quick because mm-hmm. as once. One, it doesn't take much push, like two, three, four, five times, and it's going to start in like this. Now we can we can note we can notice the yell just in here when we do. Yeah, mm. that that's going to translate to a yell when we start adding mm. compression. Whereas mm. if we have this. we have that now as i compress that listen no 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 
na na. Yeah, you hear it's the same. Yeah. So if we can get the perfect position and, and coordination on the the, the the low compression, it's the same really high up. Here's the thing: like the only difference between heavy and and light ultimately is on the light sounds the chords connect gently, and on the heavy sounds they connect more closely. And there's huh. a bit more yeah. air pressure. There's a bit more air pressure to compensate for that extra squeeze. Now, other than that, which is the arytenoids working a bit harder, yeah, everything else is the same. All the articulation yeah. is the same. The angle of the sound is the same. The 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 release, the, where the sound needs to get to to release, is the same. So, like, people have this idea in their head, like, oh, you know, th there's a big difference between light and heavy sounds. When really, like, that's like. One third of the one third of singing is what you're changing when you go from heavy to loud, and then the other two thirds, the articulation and the release, like that's basically the same. So, with that in mind, you can understand. Okay, if I can get a good, good adjustment on that light compression, and as I go to squeeze more again, I need to, I need to trust that part of the singing that I've just worked on. You understand the two thirds that, that are the same, even even though I'm getting the the, the volume back up.